In other words, it's not a matter of whether you laugh or cry. It's a matter of how you think and what you think. And the realization that comes with it is congruent with many things, I believe, but not with the idea that truth can come from desert revelations made to uh, schizophrenics and epileptics. Uh, that in his own words, without God we are nothing. My reply is, your eminence, please don't talk to me in that tone of voice. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm not a slave and I'm on the side of anyone who is in their emancipation. And it's the mind-forged manacles that are often the hardest to break. I'm sorry to tell the Cardinal Archbishop, and I wish I could say it to his face, I have to some of his... Uh, colleagues, as you might say, that his, he's wrong twice. He's first wrong in his concept of a deity, as, in other words, as someone without whom we would be nothing. And he's wrong, second, to declare that we are worthless without agreeing with his concept of that concept. And I demand to know how he knows. His eminence is claiming to know more than a primate can possibly know, and he's showing that he knows much less than most primates probably should. This is why I draw Muhammad, ladies and gentlemen. This is why I do it. It's not because I want to make the Muslims angry. We weren't drawing Muhammad before they told us we couldn't, right? Nobody was doing that before they told us we couldn't. They told us we couldn't, and that made us angry because they're not allowed to tell us that we have to obey their rules. They're not allowed to make us obey their rules. So here is my little, here is this. This is an eye and an eye and a mouth. There. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> it's lousy. But I depict this as the Prophet Muhammad of Islam. Now. This is a good thing to do. This is how we protect our rights of expression, by exercising our rights of expression. When somebody says you can't do that, it's time to do it a lot. It's time to do it loud. <laughs> and ladies and gentlemen, I am only in danger if I am perceived to be alone. I'm holding up this. And if I am the only one holding up the Prophet Muhammad's face, I'm a target. But if we all do it, no one's a target. And so I invite all of you to take out your pens. <laughs> I invite all of you to draw a smiley face on your hands. And I invite all of you to depict, thank you, the Prophet Muhammad on yourself. Because this is how we hold back religious tyranny, by denying it, by opposing it, tooth and nail. This is how we keep our freedoms, ladies and gentlemen. Even if we had multiple contemporaneous claims of the miracles of Jesus, this would not be good enough. Because miracle stories abound even in the 21st century. The devotees of, of the South Indian guru Satya Sai Baba ascribe all of the miracles of Jesus to him. He reads minds, he foretells the future, he, heal, he raises the dead, he was born of a virgin. Okay, Satya Sai Baba is, is not a fringe figure. You might not have heard of him, but he, they had a birthday party for him a few years ago, and a million people showed up. There are vast numbers of people who think he's a living God. Okay, so Christianity is predicated on the claim that miracle stories, exactly of the kind that today surround a person like Satya Sai Baba, become especially credible when you place them in the pre-scientific religious context of the first century Roman Empire, decades after their supposed occurrence, as attested to by copies of copies of copies of ancient Greek and largely discrepant manuscripts. We have Satya Sai Baba's mir miracle stories attested to by thousands upon thousands of living eyewitnesses, and they don't even merit an hour on cable television. And yet you put a few miracle stories in an ancient book, and half the people on the earth think it a legitimate project to organize their lives around them. Does anyone else see a problem with that? 
how to survive 2012, tactics and survival places for the coming pole shift. Pole shift? Where would they get that from? I don't, the pole? The end of the world? In there is the Mayan calendar, because clearly the Mayans knew more about astrophysics than any of us do today, clearly. And wait a minute, next Saturday. Whoa, next Saturday. Whoa. What country is this? What millennium is this? So what's interesting is originally they said the world was gonna end May 21st, but then it was revised, and so apparently the 21st is only Judgment Day, so Jesus is coming on the 21st, and I'm guessing that he's really pissed, okay? So, <laughs> at human beings. So, five months later is the asserted end of the world, as evidenced right here, the end of the world, and there's not much sand left in that clock. You can, you can translate this into any language, there's an audio reading of this, and you can get the printer-friendly PDF version of this account. <laughs> what country is this? I'll show you where this comes Oh, oh. Answering the question, did human beings, as we know them, develop from an earlier species of animals? This is simply evolution by natural selection. So if you're this, so this is countries ranked sort of Western countries and countries that are otherwise developed by the modern use of that word. So if you're this sort of the green bar, it means yes to that question, which means that ev you're convinced by evolution. If you're this sort of amber bar on the right, it means no. And if you're the white in between, it means you're unsure. So America's gotta be up there somewhere. No, Iceland, Denmark, Sweden, France, Japan, Britain, Norway, Belgium, Spain, Germany, Italy, Netherlands, Hungary, Luxembourg, Iceland, Slovenia, Finland, Czech Republic, Estonia, Portugal, Malta, Switzerland, Slavic Republic, Poland, Austria, Croatia, Romania, Greece, Bulgaria, Lithuania, Latvia, Cyprus, United States of America, edging out Turkey by a nose. There it is. What country is this? Maybe we should just move back to the cave. How do you think now uh, that the world actually began? Oh, uh, the world began, the Earth began by condensing out of a disk of gas. The sun and all the planets were a disk of gas. They condensed at about 4.6 4 billion years ago. And the sun became the great bulk of the, of the disk, the great bulk of the disk became the sun, and then the planets were spinning around. That's how the world began. The universe began rather longer ago, about uh, 13 or 14 billion years ago, and how that happened is more problematical. F physicists are working on that. As for life, which is my subject, well, that didn't start till uh, uh, three point something billion years ago, and has been evolving ever since. That's fascinating. At the age of nine, I, w I wouldn't say that I was an atheist. I'd say that I just became aware that there were lots of different religions and they couldn't all be right, uh, which is a bit different from being atheist. To me, as a scientist, there's a huge problem right from the start with this kind of reasoning, which is that it is th the whole strategy is one based on some a priori metaphysics. That is to say, this is, you know, very much armchair philosophizing in, uh, you know, in the best sense of the word, sitting down, thinking about all the possible ways the world can be, and concluding that those ways must somehow involve the idea of God. You don't ever, there's no step in that process in which you actually go out and look at how the universe actually is. You don't need to in this way of thinking about it because you can just argue logically that God must be part of the universe. It is my firm belief that this kind of reasoning has never taught us anything true and interesting about the actual world. If you want to actually figure out our universe, does it involve some notion of God, that is an actual fact about the specific universe in which we live, and I personally don't think that this a priori kind of reasoning is ever going to 
uh, get us there. Those people who would say, Dawkins, I believe in Jesus or whatever God they decide, and I felt the presence of the Lord. I have had that personal experience uh, in a way that whatever you say with fancy Darwin talk, I have felt it the way I felt this chair. Yeah. How do you respond uh, to that? Well, I mean, I, I, I'm not impressed by that because there are a similar number of people who are Hindu, brought up Hindus and say, I felt the presence of Lord Krishna and etc. I mean, there, there, are, there are all sorts of illusions that the human brain is very capable of, of creating and that's um, an illusion those uh, people are yeah. those people deluded those people that say they have had a religious experience I think they are yes. those people who say that we have experienced a miracle that God has well, interceded in the world so. yes most definitely that that's a delusion yes but the so notion that raising Lazarus from the dead oh of course I mean I mean that that kind of story happens so easily it happens to, to this day there are all sorts of people reporting miracles all the time and and we don't you 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 don't believe them because it does doesn't happen to chime in with the religion in which you were brought up. Many people have criticized you and when they read the God delusion. You, for example, you talk about the Jewish God and you say genocidal, homophobic, racist. Uh, you use very provocative terms. Well, that's the, the Abrahamic God, which is the God of the Jews, Christians, and Muslims. Yes. Yeah, you you are absolutely provocative on your descriptions. Uh, you, read Leviticus, read Deuteronomy. I don't need to to do any more than just quote. But is that a, a caricature to take the worst uh, or the most fundamentalist, literalist readings of it? as opposed to the thousands of years of evolution of all of well, those religions? Two, two things to say about that. One is that there are many people in this world who do take uh, the, the Bible or the Quran li literally, and literally do think that you should stone homosexuals to death or whatever it might be. On the, and the, uh, that's the first thing to say. The second thing to say is that even those people who don't say that, those people who have, as you say, evolved, have moved on, they have moved on for secular reasons. We've now abolished slavery. We now give equal rights to women. We now give votes to women. That's nothing to do with scripture. That's nothing to do with the Bible. That's come about in spite of the Bible. And people have now gone back to the Bible and said, oh, well, we'll, we'll leave out that bit. We'll leave out that bit. Although some would say, some would say the, end, the abolishment of slavery was very much inspired by the Bible, even though slavery might have been the same. Well, you've I got mean, to be joking, sure. because, because what, what you're saying is that you can, if you look through the Bible, pick a verse, you can probably find a verse that you can read as abolishing slavery, and then you've got another verse that says you should keep, keep slaves, so you're picking and choosing. That's all I'm saying. We don't get our morals from the Bible because we pick and choose on the basis of a modern morality which has evolved, you're quite right to say it's evolved, it's evolved for secular reasons, and now with hindsight, having evolved our morality for secular reasons, we can go back to the Bible and we can, as it were, rub out the bits that don't fit with our modern secular morality. Just don't, don't read them anymore, and that's what people do.